Hello, everybody. Uh, today we're going to be having a brief discussion over uh, PCIe errors, uh, correctable and uncorrectable errors, as they apply to our platform. Um, as you know, uh, our platforms today are heavily leaning into the PCI bus for a lot of our endpoint devices, and um, some of these errors uh, can have performance impact on our applications in terms of bandwidth, application hangs, performance, et cetera. So, uh, and the way currently these errors are being handled by the platform heavily leans into what's referred to today by the industry as firmware first, which basically uses SMI interrupts as the main method of reporting errors to the platform and having the platform handle these errors. So stepping back a bit and giving everybody here like a 10,000 foot view of what we have today inside our uh, training clusters, uh, we have many, many systems that have hardware acceleration in them, and these systems are all interconnected over our backend network. Now, our backend network is basically the backbone of, you know, all of the data that's being consumed by our uh, accelerated trading uh, racks, and these backend networks are, you know, basically what's consuming all of the data from each rack and keeping our training models moving forward and progressing. Um, as, as, we, as, as, as we train. Now, it's critically important that these systems remain uh, stable, error-free, and whenever they do take errors, that the platform is able to you know, process these errors without affecting the performance of the application or, for example, uh, generating like a, an application crash because that would be uh, catastrophic. Now, looking at uh, like a rack itself, for example, this is one of our recent racks that we announced at OCP. This is the Grand Teton rack. It's basically made up of two Grand Teton systems with 16 accelerators, right? The system itself has a backend switch, and um, this is the, the main rack that we're using to train our models today, like uh, La Matrida was also announced. So taking one of these Grand Teton systems and looking at the topology itself, we can see that um, you know, the general breakdown is we have two CPUs, these CPUs have multiple PCIe root ports, and these root ports are uh, communicating with a Gen 5 PCIe switch that allows us to break out the PCIe bus into many, uh, you know, many uh, ports that so we can talk to uh, either Ethernet devices or drives and or accelerators, right? And the main takeaway here is that these systems have tons of uh, PCIe, uh, you know, uh, receivers and each one of these receivers can has AER capability. The AER capability allows the reporting of errors back to the root port. And if all of these devices are generating errors and the system has to handle all of these errors, they can definitely be performance implications. Now, looking at a slice of one of these uh, CPUs, like I mentioned before, you can see the root ports, the NICs, the you know the SSDs, etc. And you know, all of these devices are transferring tons of data at Gen 5 speed, and we have to ensure that uh, the reliability and serviceability of the system remains stable uh, in the event that we see errors. Now, Anil is going to go through and uh, give us a quick uh, presentation on the proposed solution to overcome the limitations of the SMI error reporting. Thank you, Carlos. So, first of all, buena dia. Um, anyone attended the last year's um, P, uh, uh, OCP Regional Com Summit in uh, Prague? Very good. So we actually shared Grand Teton RAS or reliability solution, some part of it uh, last year in the Regional Summit and also in the Global Summit. And that time our focus was how did, did we handle the uncut errors? So all the various tasks which are like uh, downstream port containment, the ECRC kind of features. Today, we're gonna to talk about correctable errors. So how do we design the system to manage the correctable errors? Now, generally, correctable errors is correctable errors. How do we correct it? So what's the problem? Well, so there are problems. And the, there are two problems, actually, that we experienced. One is, whenever there's a correction, there's a retry, right? That's a linked retry, retraining, a retry and retraining. Now, if there are excessive retries happening, let's say because of, let's say, burst of errors, then that could cause a latency issue to the applications, right? 
Now, based on our experience, what we observed over when, since we started deploying, we don't see that kind of performance impact because uh, the way we've designed the system, PCI links have enough bandwidth um, margins, so therefore, even if the retries are happening, uh, we don't see the application impact. Okay? The second issue is uh, whenever there's an error, as Carlos was mentioning, the hardware is going to correct it, but they also will do an interrupt. So it creates an interrupt or interruption to the application uh, because that signal, the SMI, system management interrupt, goes and uh, all the way root port to the CPU, and all the cores have to now handle that error. Right? Now, that actually did cause problem to us, and that's what we observed. So what was really happening as the, so if you look at the, the kind of flow chart here, the blue box and purple box, this is all the, and then the gray box is the hardware, right? And if, anytime there's a, a, a correctable error happens, there will be SMI interrupt. That interrupt will be handled through the firmware, the, the blue color box. And uh, the firmware then will notify to the OS through this uh, sy system control interrupt again. So there, are, there is a hierarchy of interrupt, uh, interrupts have been generated to handle every correctable error. And think about it that if there are bursts of errors, the application will get interrupted quite often, okay? Now that's where the challenge we faced. Now, the reason we use SMI is because the way that this PCI spec is defined in the implementation, either all the errors, correctable and uncorrectable errors, have to be firmware first or through SMI or through OS first. Now for uncorrectable errors, we have to use SMI. And therefore, we were forced into using SMI for correctable errors also. And that's really become a problem for us. So we had to come up with a solution where correctable errors do not trigger SMI. Okay? Now, there was no simple solution. We talked to our vendors. There was no, no um, support in some sense. So we came up with our own, you can call hack or alternate solution, where what we did was, for uncorrectable errors, we still kept the same SMI flow. But for correctable errors, we changed the flow. And instead of using SMI, we did MSI, which is the um, managed, uh, what's called media system interrupt, which, is, which actually goes to the OS directly. So no firmware interruption of, through the firmware. There was no interruption to the application. Okay. Because once it, it is reported to kernel, now it is really there are all the cores are available, and only one core will get interrupted. And now there are so many cores, so therefore the application interruption is minimized significantly. Yeah. Now, with, and then, once we do that, next challenge we faced was that we still have to log the error into this, uh, what the, the orange color box, the, the BMC cell log, because that's a persistent space. And the, for us, in, when we deploy these systems, we have to make sure that all any kind of inter, any kind of error happens, it is saved. The log is saved in a persistent space, and that's the strategy we had to use the BMC cell log. Now the question is, previously the firmware, the SMM, was doing the cell logging, which was easy, platform-based solution. Once we do it to the OS, what do we do now? How does OS can write to the BMC? There's no direct path, so we decided to use RAS daemon, the, the dark green color, RAS daemon. Okay? RAS daemon is, a, again, an open source software. Which we like open source software, right? So we picked the RAS daemon. Now, we have to still modify that, which we did. We upstream the change. And um, so that's the solution we came up with. So, so OS will get the interrupt, create the read errors information, and notify to RAS daemon. And RAS daemon will then write to the BMC cell, okay? Because that's a user space uh, um, uh, daemon running. And uh, then the rest of the tooling, which is the, the, on the top, the blue box, that's, that's our own tooling, uh, where uh, we pull these cell logs and look for any errors, any new errors. And then as the errors are being rec recorded, we compute the error rate. Because our solution, the correctable errors, as was, I was saying earlier that, Hardware is correcting anyway, right? So it's not like we have to do something um, uh, intentionally. Like, it, 
take the service down, a machine down. But we need to monitor and make sure that the error rate doesn't exceed certain limit. If it does, that means something can go wrong. So it's a preemptive action. Okay? So to do the preemptive action, we have to compute the error rate and then monitor those error, error rate thresholds. So that's what this blue box, uh, our own tooling logic uh, would do that. So the beauty of this solution that we came up with was that we didn't have to change our tooling at all because that tooling remained the same whether with this, the errors are reported through SMI or now this new scheme. So we had kind of took the baby step. First, we changed the platform, uh, modified the platform, and then kept the tooling the same. But this is still a hack. This is not a complete solution architected by spec, okay? So there are some additional work need to be done, the next step, our, our work is not done. So what we have to do, and this is also a call, call to action here, um, we have to work with uh, the PCI forum, say, and especially the firmware uh, group, and um, propose some changes. ECR is an engineering change request, right? So we have to make some changes in the spec so that the firmware and the OS interface can be designed where uncorrected errors still report through SMI and corrective errors report through MSI, through the kernel, right? So that is change we are, we are actually working on right now. And uh, the, the ECR, we will, we will submit it. And then hopefully if it is accepted, then uh, uh, that's the first step. The second uh, next step is implementing this. So we have to implement it, so some, there, are, there will be some changes required in the platform firmware, as well as the, the kernel AER handler uh, to really implement this revised change. <clears throat> and as you know, this uh, AER handler, advanced error reporting, it's a legacy for decades. So anytime you have to change any legacy software, it takes some time. So we understand it will take some time, but this is the direction we are going. And the, and, and the third thing is, we have obviously want to leverage open OCP. So we want to contribute the solution um, in, in the future through the OCP hardware fault management subproject. This is the subproject that we have been running for multiple years now. Um, so, and call to action is really to, again, this is all collaboration first. So anyone who's interested and willing to help, reach out to us. Um, my, myself and Carlos, or just join our OCP hardware fault management, uh, this hyperlink there, sub-project, and um, help us uh, implement this faster than what we can do on our, on our own. And um, there are additional things, um, the, the links are here, like uh, PCI firmware spec, uh, in case uh, if you are uh, interested in looking at more what the firmware spec really is and, and where the changes will happen. <coughs> uh, reach out to us, we can, we can explain that, the, what, we pro, what we are proposing. And uh, there are additional contributions uh, already being done in the PCI space, not really, not really related to errors alone, but just, like, just uh, for the PCIe, how do we handle, how do we monitor the PCIe in, uh, information? So PCIe craw crawler is one uh, application that we, uh, we uh, ups, uh, contributed in the past. There's a lane margining tool. So again, what happens is that uh, Whenever the lane margin changes, it can result into receiver errors, okay, which is also correctable errors. So it's important to, mon to monitor those uh, per lane uh, error rate. <clears throat> so lane margining tool allows us to do that. And this is, again, contributed, already available GitHub. You can click the link and then uh, download and, and uh, play with it. With that, we'll stop. And any questions? Yeah, things. correct. So that's an out-of-band yeah, error so reporting. Complete out-of-band um, system management solution. Right. So we are looking at that also, right? And um, right now the implementations are still not mature. Right. Okay. Right. So, but that's that's the one area. That very good point you mentioned that. Uh, um, now, with out-of-band, okay. So maybe I, I didn't say one more thing that 
right now we are doing cell lock, which is out of band, right? Down the road, we want to actually eliminate that also and just report it to kernel REST daemon and save the data in, in band and then get our tooling pick up from there. So for corrective errors, our strategy is to use in band methods. Why? Because we know that corrective error rates are generally higher than uncorrected error. So there's a lot of data that need to be saved, stored, and could be bursty errors also, like fast, uh, much higher rate events can happen. And uh, our BMC-based solution uh, has certain limitations in terms of how much error data we can handle. So therefore, rather than spending more energy and, and cost in the BMC-based solution, our strategy actually is to move towards in-band completely. Uh huh. Sure, absolutely. Yep, yep. Any other question? I think we're unfortunately we're a couple All right. Thank you very much.